you just uh, how comfortable did you feel on uh, on uh, Monday? How comfortable did you feel on Monday? And you and Kaiser that that duo between you guys. Yeah, we felt really really good. I think that. You kind of see that reflected in the stats, 45 rushing yards. Uh, just thought we had a really solid defensive performance uh, and real happy with where we're at. Drew, was there any point in that first half where you, I mean, you actually knew they weren't doing anything, where you, they had to feel great? I mean, was, was there ever a point where you guys think, man, this is almost too, this is going too good? Well, we, we had the game plan coming in and we were executing it really well. You know, we didn't want Josh to get going. I uh, really felt like they were going to try to come in and run the football after what we had shown the first three weeks. Um, and to be able to stop the run early and, and get them in passing situations was definitely favorable for us. Drew, you playing pretty fast out there, like, you know, in a good rhythm. Do you, you played the first couple of games and you had kind of seen that, that time to get back from the ankle injury and now you start in a big group? Yeah, I feel like I just keep getting better and better. And uh, obviously coming off an injury, uh, every day you just continue to progress, progress, progress. And uh, I really like where my game's going and uh, where it's at right now. Was it pretty frustrating to kind of have a limited amount of snaps the first two games and then kind of get that surge in week three when you started last week? Was that sure. frustrating at all the first two games? I mean, as a competitor, you want to be out there as much as you can, you know. But we've got a really competitive group, a lot of great guys on defense that deserve to play. Um, and so just figuring out that balance of, of guys, how can we get everybody on the field playing um, and helping this football team win games. And ultimately, I think that's what it comes down to. How much of a challenge is that this Cleveland rushing game this week, especially with Hunt and Chubb being in the top five in terms of yards after contact? Yeah, two really good backs. I think an interesting uh, stat Coach Staley brought up was uh, you know, Chubb and Hunt, they have the most yards after contact in the fourth quarter out of any backs in the NFL. And I think that speaks to what Cleveland's trying to do philosophically in terms of wearing you down, wearing you down, and then be able to try to take over there in the fourth quarter. And so it's going to be imperative, you know, Sunday afternoon to stop those guys and, and not allow them to get going. Tag one discipline, even more point of emphasis this week. Yeah, our linebacker coach was given the tackling plan today, and he's like, Man, it took me all night to find good tackles on these guys because the first guy is rarely ever making the play. And I think, you know, that swarm to the ball, the second, third guy in, you know, getting getting shot attempts at the ball is going to be very, very crucial for us to be successful against them. Drew, you've been used as a blitzer a decent amount the last couple of weeks. <clears throat> what allows you to be successful in those areas on blitzes and, and getting after the quarterback to the pass rusher? Yeah, I think. Uh, one, I think talking to guys like Joey Bosa and trying to take from their game, you know, what they're seeing, how they're successful. But um, two, I think just instinctually, one of the things I like about my game is is my instincts and my feel for the game, my ability to feel the shot clock coming down, my ability to feel the quarterback's cadence when he's going to snap the ball. And, you know, you can't necessarily teach that. I think that comes with reps and experience. But I um, really felt like I had a good rhythm on when Carr was trying to snap the ball, when he was trying to see stuff. I mean, I think that shows, and you know, the pressures we were able to get on him. Do you feel like you, uh, you because of the reps and training camp and everything, you when you were thrown in there, you and Kaiser are good right off the bat because of all the reps that you guys got throughout training camp. Yeah, I mean, I think we had an incredible rotation going through training camp, and and you know, all three of us got a ton of reps and felt really comfortable playing together, and so. You know, it wasn't anything, you know, where I felt like any of us needed to get up to speed. We always felt, you know, balanced and comfortable. Um, and one of the nice things, you know, about our system is guys just being able to be interchangeable at either position. Um, and so, you know, I think that speaks to the depth in our room um, and the quality of guys we have. Drew, what what's, what's, <laughs> what's it like playing in a system where you have a safety or a defensive back being kind of the guy who's playing the place to you as, as opposed to the linebacker? What was that second part? Like, what's it, what's it like playing the system where you have a defensive back being the one who's relaying the call to you as opposed to like a linebacker traditional? Yeah, it's it's definitely a change up. Um, you know, in terms of a linebacker is kind of in the middle, so he can easily communicate to the defensive line. And then the back end with Derwin wearing the headset sometimes, especially in our stadium, we've just realized how loud it is through two games really having fans there. Um, that it's tough sometimes he's running back from covering a deep ball, trying to relay that call. And so we've had to be you know, really on top of things in terms of our signaling, in terms of our relay and communications to each level. But at the end of the day, it hasn't really affected us, You know, I feel like, as a defense. Um, on that same point with Derwin, just what does it do for a defense having a player that can move to so many different positions just in terms of the looks that you're throwing at opposing quarterbacks and, and the amount of disguise that you can put on things, having a piece like the move like that? 
Yeah, Daniel, I think if you, if you think about trying to be a quarterback and trying to identify what personnel they're in, you know, the nice thing about Derwin is we could have the same 11 guys on the field and be in different personnel packages. And that makes it really complicated and really tough for quarterbacks to try and ID, you know, okay, we studied like in this personnel grouping, they like to bring these pressures, weak side, strong side, whatever it might be. Oh, now Derwin's lining up here. Like, what are they in? And it makes it, it, makes it complicated, it makes it difficult on those guys. I mean, I don't know that it's necessarily been up and down for Kenneth. I think Kenneth's an incredible football player. And I think when you come in as a rookie linebacker in the NFL and you're a first round pick and there's so much pressure on you and there, there's just all these things happening mentally, you're calling the defense, doing all these different things. And so I think there was a lot of responsibility on, on Kenneth's plate. And I just continue to expect and see him to grow as a player. And I think he's going to be an outstanding player for us. Drew, for, uh, for as good as that first half was against the Raiders, what lessons can the defense take from that third quarter specifically? Yeah, you gotta be you gotta be focused. You know, you can get you can get complacent. It's easy to be up twenty one and think you got the game in the bag, um, and you know, come out and just expect every game's gonna be close in the NFL. And I think you see that response in the Raiders. They're a great football team, and you know, Carr was able to come out, scramble a little bit, make some throws. We had some costly penalties that gave them yards, but uh, you just gotta expect it's gonna be close in the NFL. When you see a uh, quarterback like Baker Mayfield, what makes him so dangerous? I mean, I think it's it's a trend with all quarterbacks these days, just the ability to extend the play. Extend the play, get out the pocket, make throws, uh, make plays with their legs. And uh, whenever you can extend the play like that, it makes us have to cover that much longer. With the film that you've seen of him in the four games, have you noticed any difference in him the past two games since he had the shoulder injury, maybe in mobility, what he does, or throwing? Yeah, I haven't I haven't necessarily seen any any differences in their game. I think he's a a competitor that, you know, even though he has a little nick, he's he's going to say, I'm good. And he's going to want to have the whole route tree open and he's going to want to be able to throw to these guys and get the ball downfield. And so, um, you know, off the tape, you can't necessarily see anything. It was my first time actually knowing today. I saw the headline on the bottom, you know, of ESPN that that, that was an issue, but you can't necessarily tell off the tape. And then I don't know how much you two keep in contact, but what's it been like seeing Jock have the success that he's had in uh, Cleveland? Seeing who? Jeremiah. Oh, yeah. Woo. Man, I love that kid. Uh, he's just, uh, he is a special, special player. I think you see him running down on kickoff. Um, you know, he's a, he's a focal point of our team's, you know, approach this week, um, special teams approach. we got to take care of him. And then offensively, you know, our guys are, are, are worried about him as a blitzer moving around. They can just do a ton of different things, that, you know, with him. He was so versatile at Notre Dame. He's such a great guy and competitor.